All right, uh, 16 minutes after the hour. Glad you're along. Uh, your afternoon drive for Dallas, Fort Worth, and of course, uh, anywhere you happen to be listening coast to coast, it's toll free. 1 800 288 WBAP, 1 800 288 9227. Well, this is the walkout day, and of course, I just gave you my opinion. Uh, for the facts, uh, what's going on in New York? Let's go to Steve Kastenbaum with Westwood One. Steve, how you doing? I'm doing well. A cold, uh, windy day here uh, in the streets of the city, so I apologize if you hear some wind. Uh, here as I'm uh, talking with you about the events here in the city today. Not a problem, Steve. Um, I'm hearing kids, uh, thousands of kids took part in this. They did. Here in New York, it was um, pretty much citywide in all five boroughs. You heard chants of save the children rising up from uh, the streets uh, at high schools. Uh, You know, we have the largest education system, the largest public school system in the nation, 1.1 million students. And hundreds of thousands of high schoolers walked out today at 10 a.m. Uh, and uh, held these rallies across uh, the city. Uh, and they went back into school uh, after about an hour or so. Uh, did you say hundreds of thousands? Yeah. When you tally up uh, all the high schools, you know, we have about 300,000 high schoolers in New York uh, alone. You know, it's uh, uh, 9th, 10th, 11th, and 12th graders. So when you tally them all up, You've got uh, more than 300,000 high school students in the five boroughs of New York City. I don't know that every single one of them took part in the walkout, but it seems like just about every single high school in the city uh, had a participation in some way or another. And it was peaceful, I assume? Yeah, it was. Um, In in lower Manhattan, there was a a high school that uh, specializes in teaching leadership that uh, saw some elected officials, including the governor, joining them. Uh, in Brooklyn, where I am at, we had a big rally with thousands of high schoolers at uh, Brooklyn Borough Hall, uh, at Edward R. Murrow High School in Brooklyn. Uh, the mayor joined students there, uh, and it was very peaceful, yes. Uh, I, you know, I have to ask, because, you know, we're hearing the same thing all over the country. Uh, the politicians have failed us. Uh, what is government going to do? Um, has anyone tabled a, uh, a solution, uh, or is it just... Uh, facing toward D.C., trying to figure out what uh, is going to happen next? The sense that I got here, and I can't speak for other cities, uh, but uh, I did see, you know, a common theme in the headlines uh, being that, you know, students everywhere are just saying uh, enough is enough. We want to go to school and not have to worry about these issues concerning safety. We want to be in safe environments. That seemed to be uh, the common thread. I mean, yes, there was a lot of talk about guns and about gun legislation, but it seemed like, you know, the overriding issue was that students feel that they, you know, have been let down by the leaders across the United States because they don't feel like they're in a safe environment today. Uh, well, that, that seems to be the point or the rallying point, at least. What about the po- uh, the politics of this thing? Uh, Paul, you said some uh, political leaders, including the mayor, showed up. Uh, what, what was their position? Yeah, they certainly, obviously, there is a political aspect to this. And, and you know, these uh, uh, leaders in here in New York State are, are very pro-gun legislation. We have some strict gun laws in New York State and even stricter ones here in New York City. And so they are very pro-new gun legislation uh, when it comes to the mayor, when it comes to the governor and other elected officials in New York. So that, that definitely played into these events. And, and those politicians were calling on Washington, D.C., to, uh, you know, at least have a conversation about new gun laws and uniform gun policies across the United States. All right. Finally, Steve, and I do, a, we're talking with Steve Kastenbaum with Westwood One uh, News. He is uh, live from New York. You can hear the wind uh, blustering there, and it's uh, quite cold, I guess. Uh, Steve, uh, the next step, the next move I'm hearing is a march on Washington. What do you know about that? Yeah, I'm hearing that as well. Uh, You know, it's interesting uh, because something like that requires a lot of organization. And um, I'm not quite sure uh, who who would be the groups behind that, you know, who who would organize such an event, who would be applying for the permits and that sort of thing. Uh, I think a lot of those questions are up in the air at this point. Uh, These types of uh, walkouts, uh, some of them were organic in nature. You know, it it was a student led movement in many in many instances at many schools and uh you know they they work with their school administrators to make it happen uh but when it comes to having a march in washington that requires a lot of organization right and a lot of uh a lot of uh, responsibility taking when it comes to liability and other things like that 
So um, I'm not sure who would be at the forefront of that. You're absolutely correct. A lot of people have uh, have theorized there must be someone or some organization behind this. Uh, a 15 year old doesn't organize a march on Washington in study hall. Um, right. <laughs> yeah. Although, you know, there have been through the years, you know, um, spontaneous grassroots movements on Washington. But when you start talking about large scale events that attract, a, you know, a million or more people to Washington D.C., then that does involve uh, uh, a need for organization at the top. Uh, Steve, great report and bringing it to us here in Dallas. Uh, Steve Kastenbaum, Westwood One News. Steve, uh, hope to talk to you soon, my friend. Always a pleasure. Thank you. All right. Uh, you know, this is uh, this is what, what we're talking about. I mean, there is a conversation going on in Washington. I don't think the students are listening because they have not been, <laughs> how do I say this politely? I think this entire thing, um, to, to some degree, is being orchestrated by the left because the conversations are going on, have been going on. Almost since the gun smoke cleared, conversations have been going on. Ted Cruz uh, has been uh, talking with people constantly about this. Another caller described this shooter as someone who wants to kill people. And yet in that instance, the FBI did not even open an investigation on it. Why not? Senator, I share your frustration, I share your anger, and I share your concern that this doesn't happen again. Nobody followed up and called the local cops. Do you know this guy? No, sir. Yeah, the government's going to take care of you, all right. I mean, you and I know because we're adults. We have benchmarks in our lives. We have high water marks. We have life experience, uh, some more than others. Um, but we've been there, all right? We've been around the barn a time or two, even at night when we had to feel our way. Um, these are kids. These are kids. How much life experience do they have? They are perfect, perfect uh, for being manipulated by the left. Now, the, the left's goal is to get rid of all guns. You and I both know that. Uh, but all I'm hearing, you failed us. As politicians, you failed us. Government didn't serve us. We've been... F Stop! Some adult needs to walk into the room and say, excuse me, government can't protect you. You are your own first responder in any given situation, and then hopefully within four or five minutes, law enforcement can get there. D.C. can't do anything for you. If you don't believe that, go to a DMV on a Thursday afternoon and tell me how much faith you have in the government being organized to, to help you, to save you, to do anything for you. All right, we're going to take your calls in just a second. Um, Eric uh, Bushman is standing by the very latest breaking news, and we'll check your afternoon drive as it begins to get uh, heated up out there. And You know what? Good news for the 18-wheelers. They were all in a line in the middle lane today. People could get by on the left, get by on the right. It wasn't, you know, some uh, some idiot in a four-wheeler trying to zip back and forth. That's what happens when there are three abreast. So, good job, 18-wheelers. Nice job. They were not on I-30. Yeah. Well, they were on I-30. Yeah, were, uh, and I know it's lanes. absolutely 100% because of this show. Yeah. Uh, 225 the time. I'm Rick Roberts. Your call straight ahead.